Hello all, in this video we will practice a few multiple choice questions on ancient Indian knowledge of astronomy. Here we will revisit the Indian contribution in astronomy in the form of Panchang, the Indian calendar system and other astronomical instruments. So let us start. The first question is why ancient Indian astronomy is considered unique? The given options are option A. Indians focus more on cultural practices than celestial observations. Option B. Indian astronomy emphasizes the inert nature of celestial bodies. Option C. There is a strong sense of mutual dependence between earthly and celestial entities in Indian astronomy. Option D. Indian astronomy does not involve systematic observation or data collection. To answer this question correctly, we must recall in Indian astronomy, there is a strong sense of mutual dependence between earthly and celestial entities. Contrasting it with the western view where space is perceived as separate from daily life. And the correct option is option C. There is a strong sense of mutual dependence between earthly and celestial entities in the Indian astronomy and therefore ancient Indian astronomy is considered unique. Next question is what is the significance of consulting the Panchang in Indian daily life? The options given are option A it determines agricultural practices, option B it shapes cultural rituals and practices, option C it provides information about celestial events and option D it assists in mathematical calculations. To answer these questions correctly we must consider in Indian knowledge system Consulting the Panchang is a daily necessity in Indian life. It often shapes the cultural practices and the planning of activities based on the celestial events. And therefore, the correct answer to this question is option B. The significance of consulting the Panchang in Indian daily life is it shapes the cultural rituals and the practices. Next question is what led to the development of advanced mathematics in Indian astronomy? The options given are option A the need for understanding agricultural practices, option B the desire to explore celestial bodies, option C the requirement for formal understanding of astronomical behaviors and option D the influence of western scientific methods. To answer this question you may recall the development of advanced mathematics in Indian astronomy was driven by necessity for a formal understanding of astronomical behaviors and events. This makes the correct answer to this question as option C the requirement for formal understanding of astronomical behaviors led to the development of advanced mathematics in Indian astronomy. Next question is how do Vedic texts contribute to understanding the history of Indian astronomy. The options given for this question are option A they provide insights into cultural practices, option B they contain references to mathematical concepts, option C they offer astronomical observations and dates and option D they emphasize the importance of western scientific methods. The answer to this question can be found out from the facts that Vedic texts contain astronomical references. These references help in computing possible dates of their composition. This provides insights into the history of Indian astronomy. And therefore the correct answer to this question is option C. The Vedic texts contribute to the understanding of history of astronomical by offering astronomical observations and dates. Next question is how many components constitute the Indian calendar system known as Panchang? The given options are option A 4 components, option B 5 components, option C 6 components and option C 7 components. The Panchang that is Indian calendar system means 5 limbs or 5 components in Sanskrit. These components are Tithi, the angular separation between the sun and the moon, Karana, half of the Tithi, Nakshatra, a portion of the ecliptic where the moon is situated, Yoga, the period during which the sum of the longitudes of the sun 
and the moon amounts to 13 degrees 20 minutes or integral multiples vara the day of the week each of these components contributes to the precise calculation of the dates and times in the indian calendar system and therefore the correct answer to this question is there are five components constitute the indian calendar system known as panchang next question is which one of the following is not a part of panchang the given options are option a tithi option b rashi option c karana option d nakshatra in the panchang system rashi refers to the zodiac sign which is not one of the five components of the panchang the panchang components are tithi angular separation between the sun and the moon karana half of the tithi nakshatra portion of the ecliptic where the moon is situated yoga specific period based on the sum of the longitudes of the sun and the moon and the vara day of the week rashi is used in astrology to determine a person's characteristics based on the position of the planets at the time of their birth but it is not a part of the panchanga system and therefore the correct answer to this question is option b is not a part of the panchang next question is what is the karana in the panchanga system the given options are option a a portion of the ecliptic option b a quarter of a tithi option c half of a tithi and option d a lunar mention the karana in the panchanga system represents half of a tithi in the calculation of the panchanga a tithi is the angular separation between the sun and the moon since a tithi is divided into two equal parts to determine the karana it can be understood as half of a tithi this division helps in final time measurements within the lunar cycle and therefore the correct answer to this question is a karana in panchang system is half of a tithi next question is how is the nakshatra calculated in the indian panchanga system the given options are option a by dividing the longitude of the moon by 12 option b by dividing the longitude of the sun by 27 option c by dividing the longitude of the moon by 800 and option d by dividing the longitude of the sun by 800 the nakshatra is calculated by dividing the longitude of the moon by 800. In the Indian Panchanga system, the ecliptic is divided into 27 equal parts, each corresponding to a nakshatra. Since the moon's position along the ecliptic determines its nakshatra, dividing the moon's longitude by 800 helps identify the nakshatra. This calculation method aligns with the traditional division of the ecliptic into the nakshatras, each spanning 13 degrees and 20 arc minutes. And therefore, the correct answer to this question is Option C, by dividing the longitude of the moon by 800, the nakshatra can be calculated in the Indian Panchanga system. Next question is what is the definition of a yoga in the context of the Indian Panchanga system? The given options are the period when the moon is closest to the earth. Option B, the sum of the longitudes of the sun and the moon. Option C, the angular separation between the sun and the moon. Option D, the period when the moon is in conjunction with a plane. In the Indian Panchanga system, yoga refers to the angular relationship between the sun and the moon. Specifically, it is calculated as the sum of the Nirayana longitudes, the celestial longitudes measured from a fixed reference point of the sun and the moon. This sum is then divided by 13 degrees 20 minutes or 800 minutes to determine the yoga at any given moment. The quotient represents the serial number of the yoga that has elapsed, while the reminder indicates the elapsed part of the current yoga. 
and therefore the correct answer to this question is the definition of the yoga in the context of indian panchanga system is given as the sum of the longitudes of the sun and the moon next question is according to aryabhatta what was the starting day of the current kali yuga option a sunday option b monday option c friday option d wednesday according to aryabhatta who was an ancient indian mathematician and astronomer the starting day of the current kali yuga was friday aryabhatta calculated this based on his astronomical observations and calculations the process of dividing the ahargana that is the count of the days since the beginning of the kali yuga by 7 the remainder obtained from this division determines which day of the week it was if the remainder is zero it indicates that the day corresponds to friday which was the starting day of the kali yuga according to aryabhatta so when dividing the ahargana by 7 as the remainder was zero it signifies the day of beginning of the kali yuga was friday and therefore the correct answer to this question is friday was the starting day of the current kali yuga next question is what is the term used for counting the days continuously from a reference point in the indian calendar system the options given are a varsha option b panchang option c ahargana and option d nakshatra the concept of ahargana is used in indian calendar system to denote the continuous counting of days from a reference point this system was introduced by aryabhatta 1 who calculated the beginning of the current kali yuga as february 18 3102 before common era ahar means days and gana means counting in sanskrit so ahar gana literally translates to counting of days in english and therefore the correct answer to this question is option c ahar gana is the term used for counting the days continuously from a reference point in the indian calendar system Thank you for watching this video. I hope this will help you in clearing your concepts about ancient Indian knowledge of astronomy.